I want to tell you a story. Now this is a story of growth. This is a story of aliens coming in and disrupting an ecosystem. This is a story that is happening around the planet. Now when I say growth, when I say aliens, when I say uh, planetary change, I'm not speaking about a blockbuster alien movie. Instead, I'm speaking about a story surrounding tadpoles and crawfish in Italy. Let me introduce the Italian Agile Frog, otherwise known as Reina Latestae. Now these frogs are found in the northern parts of Italy where they live as frogs. But what I'm really interested in are their tadpoles. You see, these frogs lay their eggs inside of wetlands, small ponds, small pools of water throughout their range. These eggs, of course, turn into tadpoles, and the tadpoles take around three months to turn into a little frog. But what's interesting is that across their range, this development time is not consistent. Where if we broadly divide these frogs into lowland and foothill populations, the foothills are colder than the lowland populations. And what's interesting is that in these colder foothill populations, the frogs develop faster. Now, this isn't a crazy difference of speed, it's maybe four days on average, but the fact remains that across these colder populations, it is faster. Now, the reason why they develop faster can be linked to any number of things. In fact, if we look at the various hypotheses, we can see that this change in development time associated with temperature could be something such as prey availability. It could be that there is a difference in how long the water stays in those areas. And it could just be the fact that other competing interests, say predators, say other frogs, say other organisms, affect how this species develops. So what happens when a new organism comes in? What happens when an alien organism comes in? What happens when an invasive species comes into play? Enter in Procamberus clarki, the red swamp crawfish. You may call them a crawdad, you may call them swamp lobsters, whatever. But this crawfish is native to northern parts of Mexico and the southeast of the United States. However, it has quickly become an invasive species worldwide. Now, invasive species are spread around the world, often by humans, and when they enter in some ecosystem, they have negative effects on the species that reside there. Now this species was not from Italy. It had evolved underneath a completely different set of circumstances with different organisms. So what happens when it invaded Italy? In the early 2000s, it was first noted in the north of the country and then quickly spread southward. So what did it do to these tadpoles? That's what Mulatto et al. sought to find out. They wanted to see what effect these crawfish had on the agile frog tadpoles. And what's great is they'd already sampled tadpoles from around the region before the crawfish invaded. This let them actually know how the species has responded to these crawfish. So they resampled, they went back after crawfish had already invaded some ponds. And they brought the tadpoles back. They reared them in the lab. They figured out, hey, we have this data from the early 2000s. We know how they developed before crawfish. How are they going to develop now? And what they found was fascinating. They found that tadpoles who were in ponds that had been invaded by crawfish were developing faster. And this makes sense, right? If there's a predator in the water where you are trying to grow up and these crawfish are absolutely predators, you want to get out of the water as fast as you can. While the difference may have only been a few days, those few days may actually be the deciding factor between life and death of these tadpoles. So testing between the foothill and the lowland populations again, they reared tadpoles in an aquarium with crawfish. How would tadpoles respond 
to a crawfish being in the water, even if they were from a pond that wasn't invaded. Those tadpoles that were in the same tank as a crawfish developed faster as well. Sensory and chemical cues given off by that crawfish made the tadpoles develop faster. Now this may be because there's a similar species of crawfish in the area, so the tadpoles already have some adaptation to respond to crawfish. But this is fascinating, because this isn't some study that happened over hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years. The time frame between the first invasion to this study post-invasion was only 14 years. This is evolution happening quickly. This is evolution happening in a time scale we can understand. And this is something that's happening in our own backyards. Now you may ask, okay, what does it matter that these frogs are developing faster? They're still frogs when they come out and they're just responding to a predator. When we have a change in development, what we have is a subsequent change in adulthood. These frogs that developed faster came out of the water with a smaller body size. They jumped worse than the frogs that had developed longer. What happens during development affects adulthood. And while we may not be sure the exact impact this has on these adult frogs, we know that it does affect them at some level. And more and more research is coming out showing that in other species of frogs, these compounding effects do change the survival of a species. Now what we have here is a story. We have a story of growth. We have a story of aliens coming in and disrupting an ecosystem. We have a story that is happening in our own backyards. This is not some isolated spot. This is not some area deep in the jungle, hidden away from everything. This is happening in areas that people can go and hike to. This is happening in areas that anyone can go and see. Evolution is happening in our own backyards. And for these frogs, there is absolutely still hope. Because we have this research showing that the crawfish have an impact, we now know more about the system. And knowing more about the system will allow us to better conserve this species. And in fact, it's going to help us better conserve many species. Because if we just look at one species in a vacuum, sure, this research can only apply to that one species. But science doesn't work in a vacuum. No, instead, this research can be used to help species that are similar to it. This research can be used to help species that are also being affected by crawfish. And this research can be used to directly say, we need to help this frog. We have the numbers to back up that these frogs are being affected by a crawfish. We have the data so we can make a change. Hope you like this story.